All right. So, did you know Grey Merchant of Asphodel is legal in this format? Because I I had definitely forgotten until someone brought it up in the subscriber Discord server the other day, and I was like, huh, that card that card's still legal, isn't it? So, um, you have a pseudo combo kill in this deck. You play Ayara first of the Lochthwain on three. You play Nightmare Shepherd on four. And then you play Gary on five, drain them for, for eight. And then you sack Gary to Ayara. He comes back with Nightmare Shepherd and drains them for eight again. If you have any other uh, Black Devotion cards before that, he drains for more than that. Um, we've got a little bit, yes, Vito is also good. Vito says when you gain life, an opponent loses that much life. So this makes Gary deal twice your Black Devotion and damage, which is sick. Um, we've got a little bit of grind here as well. We've got some Luris along with Null Priest of Oblivion. And the way Luris interacts with Kicker is you can kick Null Priest out of your graveyard when you're casting it with Luris, which is different than which is different than how um, X spells work with Luris. But I, I promise you, you can kick this card when you cast it with Luris. So we've got a Scoach of interaction and murderous rider here in the main deck. And then in the sideboard, we've got a bunch of different discard spells and spot removal. I'm not sure if treacherous blessing is good or not. That could maybe, could maybe be bad, but I don't, I'm not. Oh, you know what? When I built this deck, I was high on blood chief's thirst. And since I've played more, I really don't like this card. So I'm gonna cut those and round up, round up the rest of these. Yeah. What new decks, cards this deck get out of cold eye? Uh, actual nothing? I believe the answer is actual nothing. Actual, actual nothing. Soul Shatter and Eliminate. Nah, this isn't really a control deck. Deadweight. I like the idea of Deadweight. It is good with Luris. See, so you can see that being fine. Nah, I don't want colorless lands in my Ayara deck. I want 20, 24 things that make black mana. How does Bulky work with Luris? Uh, I'm pretty sure you can only cast the front half. Can I, get, can I get a judge on that? I'm pretty sure you cast you can cast the front half of it, not the back. He's so angry. I think this card gets the award for most aggressive uncommon animation in the client. have the counter unless I pay one card. Feels bad, man. Probably gonna start drawing cards next turn. We'll hold on to this till we have seven mana. Read. You could do it, Jake. I believe in you. One murderous rider, please. Joke's on you, opponent. I wasn't casting that card yet anyways, and now I take less damage with my castle. Opponent doing us a solid here. Yeah, it is, it is, I'm actually looking forward to playing Smithguard on stream too, Scottish. I spent like two hours playing it over the weekend. Like finding a couple of decks that I was I felt okay with. I, I it's been it's been a long time since I touched it. The, the core gameplay in Mythgard's really good. Hey, 
Hey, Silaris, thanks for the 28 months, and thanks for being here regardless. I appreciate the support. It's good to have you around. So many, so many great games out there right now. It's fun, it's fun getting to poke at lots of them. Uh, so, I have the Rainbow Enchantment deck built, but I don't think, um, I don't think it really got any meaningful upgrades looking through any of the other cards in the new set. So, the big red deck I played a bunch of, I had upgrades to, and the blue-orange Enchantment aggro deck got upgrades. So, those are the two things I'm going to play today. I think we just, like, Gary them here, huh? I'm gonna attack. Like, drain you for five. Attack for three. Are they gonna kill us in response? Three. Guess I should attack first. If we draw a land next turn, we can play this and get back these two. This could, this could eventually be a combo kill with this, right? Like, do this, do this, and now I'm two mana off of using Awakening to get all of these back? A Awakening is, like, very good in this deck. It's very possible that I should be playing more total lands, so this can be a spell more often. Yeah, those those low power, individually weak card synergy based decks just tend to not be very good in Magic Luna Hero. It was super disappointing by the end. And had a couple of good matches with it off stream, but just it just got dumpstered all day on stream. So you get three draws here at some lands. Perfect. Perfect. In case we find something we want to cast here. East. Thanks, Wasatch Warrior. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it felt good from this perspective too, so. I'm, I'm enjoying it for sure. I think like, like we did some voting for this deck. I think we're going to do like viewers vote between a few different decks I put together and think might be okay two to three times a week. Gives folks an excuse to spend channel points too, which is nice. <clears throat> I guess a re oh, they're gonna make this. They're gonna make this the thing, right? That's awkward. I should have left both of these back. A real question is, do I want to play around their counter unless I pay one card? I probably do, right? I just need to get a turn with my graveyard. The problem here is they're probably getting Valky, Vorn Clicks, and the extra turn card. Ah, uh, deal. Okay, so they should be dead, right? If they don't have a counter spell here. I guess they could have untapped land counter unless I pay one. I can't I can't play around that at this point though, right? This is gonna this is gonna tap my stuff and then I'm gonna die.
I, I could do this into this. I'm technically not dead. They drive an extra turn spell and I'm dead though. Hey, do you have your second counter spell in 30 cards? They could. They've drawn a lot of cards here. Fuck. Yeah, the opponent, the opponent's architect is really, really good. Oh, very, very frustrating game. To bring in a bunch of duress. Honestly, I think I'm just cutting the murderous riders. The scorpion attack doesn't matter. Oh yeah, well, so they only play one copy of Valky usually. Is Awakening a spell or a land this game? I think it's likely to be a land. I don't know that Kiora Best to Sea God is like actually a playable card. Mostly, it's mostly in the opponent's archetype as like a combo enabler. So I think we veto here, and then next turn we can Luris recast the Whisper Squad. A QR of SSC Gods is seven. Okay, and then if we hit a land next turn, this giving everything lifelink closes out pretty quickly. Oh, well, I guess this already has lifelink. Like six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Could have also been right to deploy Nightmare Shepherd ahead of Loris. Yeah, the spell lands are great design. They're definitely one of the best things to happen to magic since I started playing. I like them, I like them a lot. They've got three, four, five, six mana total here. So they can't they can't draw you in and play it. We could see a removed spell out of them. Got 
Bien. This is instant speed, right? Search library first, scribe, put on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Cards should double as lands or only some. I think having only a few double as lands is fine. <laughs> oh, that's rude. This ex exiles everything. I just can't give them that one, right? Have your, have your extra turn, I guess. Yeah, we're probably dead at this point, right? I think, I think the opponent's deck is very likely to be the deck to beat moving forward. Like we're not quite able not quite able to get under them that game. If we would have had Grey Merchant, we might have been okay there. Grey Merchant would have done... Uh, yeah, it would have been lethal, right? On that last turn, if we would have had Grey Merchant instead of uh, whatever it's called. Yep, yeah, yeah I, I, that is a fantastic comparison, Lampton. Emergent Ultimatum on the surface looks super interesting, but in reality, it's like Gifts Ungiven and Storm. I, I hadn't drawn that comparison, but it's perfect. Like, it takes this card that's supposed to be super interesting, but like, in reality, there's just like one objectively busted thing to do with it. You're supposed to, you're supposed to just do that. Hey, Matthias, thank you for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. They doom foretold with off color triumphs, perhaps, here. Seeming, seeming likely. Rough. Uh, castle's gonna have to have a strong back here. I think I'd rather draw a card than activate Whisper Squad. It's close, though. They like five five color Yorian? I guess we haven't seen blue out of them yet, technically, huh? Hey, CMTB, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel.
Yeah, I, I honestly, so like, I don't think anything needs to be banned and people tend to be a little bit banned, happy, talk happy in general, but I think if there's a problem with the ultimatum decks, it's, I would definitely assume that it's Yorian related and not, not ultimatum related. Would be, would be my wishes. Yeah, that's, that's super unfortunate. He's, he says before getting savaged by a Yorian. Definitely, definitely Yorian related. I, so, the more I play this format, the more I think Ugin is actually super reasonable and fine. Ugin, both Ugin and Embercleave are cards that how they've played out in practice is very different than what I expected going into this format. And I actually think they're reasonable and fine. Those are, those are cards that I would say, I think I was wrong and they're actually fine. I think I just do this this turn. The way, the way the, the play patterns play out, like, control decks just really aren't playable without Ugin. Angry, angry is too tight in standard, yep. Can I kill them this turn? Pretty close to it, right? Ooh, that's gotta be lethal. So we do this, we sack this. I think I wait on this trigger because I can recast it with this. If I would have brought this back with this, could I have killed them this turn? I don't think so. I could have played this. So we're just passing here, right? Yeah, I think that's more related to your deck being bad than anything. Oh, second Ayara would die 2x with Shepard. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I could have I could have killed them. I missed lethal. We'll just full attack, kill them with tokens. Yeah, maybe. I don't think they can have a removal spell here. Yeah. Yeah, like this, this happens. Okay, so they're gonna try and exile something and I'll respond, I'll respond with this. But in either the life game. This is, this is more, denying them the two from here is more than getting a damage with Whisper Squad. Our serrated scorpion is basically unblockable though, which means they should be dead here, right? Oh, do they have enough mana? Oh yeah, they're just dead. They needed they needed one more mana to be able to draw this Yorin right and play it. <laughs> All right, oh sweet. Oh, wait, Eggdom, Eggdom's Awakening so far has just been incredible. I kind of want more copies of that card in our deck. Is this a duress matchup? I don't know that it is, right? Like they don't, they don't have counter spells and they don't have, they don't have a super high impact card like, uh, like Emergent Ultimatum. How do you feel about Treacherous Blessing just to grind, huh? 
Like, I don't really think I want removal spells in this matchup, but it's like swap some of those out for Blessing here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, Steven. If the next couple of sets this year are as good as this this current this current one is, there's a there's a good good reason to be optimistic about things. Think I'm bottoming Nightmare Shepherd here, so we get to go squad on one, activate squad on two, veto on three, double activate squad on four, Gray Merchant on five. Sounds, sounds pretty good. There's our fifth land. Now the question is, do we get like, you know, extinction evented? They could bind this here. But as long as we don't get extinction evented, I think we're pretty okay. I would love if they just kept linearing though. <sighs> that's, a, that's a fucking card right there. Chat, remember, greatness at any cost. Any, any cost. So, we're at five mana. Are we just like setting up for the long haul of Eggdoms bringing back, bringing back Gary? Definitely feels like an Eggdoms bringing back, bringing back Gary game. Come on! Damn it, Bobby. Okay, so I guess this means... This means I have to just go now, right? Yeah, if we, if we just like, if we'd been on the play or just like not gotten turn three sweepered, like we got turn three sweepered and we were on the draw this game. It's like, honestly, kind of impressive. Like, I know we're probably not winning this game if they have spells in hand, but like all, all things considered, what we did here was really good. Yeah, yeah, we're going to upkeep, activate Whisper Squad here. If they can't interact with our board here, we might kill them. I am blessed by Nyx. Are they dead? Hey. 
actually, I should not do this. I should not do this because this is going to come back with this and I can activate it after the fact and we might draw a two devotion card here, right? We're so close to killing them. No, you can't duress the sweeper. They hide it. We have to have it exactly on turn one. Otherwise, they foretell it, and then your discard spell doesn't work anymore. And we have 14 damage here, unfortunately. Which is not quite enough. So we were so close. We need them to not have this on the one turn they had it or not get turn three swept. All right, it's fine. We're going to get them turn th game three on the play. Get him. We'll get him game three on the play. Orn, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel today. Uh, I do have another Green Merchant. Oh, we have four Green Merchants in our deck, yeah. This is the third Gary, yeah. Wait. That kills them, right? Well, I mean... Thanks. Do they not realize the tokens have CMC? I think they don't realize the tokens have CMC. No, you can see what the shepherd tokens are getting back. It was on the left underneath my chat. Yeah, because Vito, Vito doubles it up. <laughs> All right, well. Rather rather than winning the game, the opponent chose to kick the ball. We should we should not have won that game. My opponent could have minused their Calyx to exile, exile one of my things. So, you know. Eh, give it. Let's do it. So far, so far... Egg Dub's Awakening's been really good. <laughs> so someone just commented on one of my YouTube videos from October saying... He has a Biden-Harris banner. What a joke. Sheep, Trump won, communist. Oh, our democracy is forever damaged. It's just, it's not, it's not repairable, chat. It's not, it's not repairable. We are, we are eternally fucked. There's more things wrong with that comment than there are words in it. <laughs> big, big mood. You'll note, you'll note that now that the election is over though, there is no longer a Biden-Harris banner on my stream because the entirety of my personality is not wrapped up in a cult TV star running for a political position of power. So as a reasonable, sane human being, I have removed all of the branding because the election has passed.
You have a Biden flag instead? Yeah, something like that. For, pe for people that are new to the channel, uh, I frequently describe myself as aggressively progressive and we, we occasionally talk about politics here. I think I'm actually just using this to revive a scorpion. It's like using my mana for the turn. It's like hits you for five and then like next turn we activate this and kill them. It's like turn five lethal here if they don't do anything. Extinction event. Oh, just binding, sure. All right, well, attack for four, I guess. When Biden won, I hopped into my fry oil hybrid foreign car and honked my horn all the way around town. <laughs> God bless you. You are you are at one opponent. I would like to attack. Uh, wait. If this has lifelink, do they die? This kills them if they have lifelink, right? Right, we get that trigger, that's how that works. All right, and Murderous Rider out, Duress in. I think it's just what we're doing again here. This deck actually seems like, this is, this deck's been way less embarrassing than I was expecting it to be. I was, I was expecting our deck to be mopey and bad and so far it's like super reasonable. The, uh, the egg, the egg dumb's awakenings are like, the egg dumb's awakenings have been very impressive. Yeah, Beto turning your R2 drop into a 4-1 is sweet. But we played a dragon mythos. We haven't yet, Morgie. I haven't, I haven't built one that I like yet. I need to, I need to figure out exactly what that looks like. Sure. It's it's nice to have fun playing magic again. 20, 2020 was a brutal year for a lot of reasons. I'd forgotten forgotten what that felt like. The break the break was good. The break breaks can be good for the soul chat. I will say I'm super into always being able to cast my spells when we have lands to cast them. It's like having having a bunch of spell lands is great too. Like Awakening and Castle are probably the two best in both of these cycles. So getting to play both of those is sweet. For Team or Mythos Dragon Ramp, I will get that built and we will play it tomorrow, Worky. Thank you for your generosity. Can't beat that card, right? Just gotta take it away. They're gonna gorilla me here in a minute, but it is what it is. We're not getting gorilla this turn, we'll get gorilla the turn after. Not dragon darken. We will darken lots of people. Darken ho! At any cost, chat. At any cost. We are 100% paying five for a card. I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Robo. Robora. Life's, life's swell. I don't think I mentioned today. Today is, uh, and this is this is something that's mildly terrifying too. Today is my um, 
Today is my oldest son's seventh birthday. Which, if being, if being 30 didn't make me feel like an old man, that definitely does. We might die to this extra turn here. Christy. Christy is making him a Minecraft-themed cake, so I'll have to post a picture of that later. Yeah, we're, we're just dead here, right? We just can't beat... We couldn't, we couldn't beat the Sweeper, and we couldn't beat the Extra Turn spell. We just run it back and hope for a little bit better beats on the play. Yeah, I mean, real decks have curves, right? Hope to draw some lands. It's possible this deck should be... I think I'm going to get... I think I'm going to add a 26 land to this deck. The Murderous Riders in the main deck have been pretty whatever. I think I'm going to go up at least one land and maybe find another two drop to play. To play Solemn Simulacrum. I guess technically ramping on that X spell isn't terrible. I don't know, your things aren't always dying is the issue. I don't know, I, I feel like hitting your land drops naturally for the Awakening is pretty fine. Hey, congrats, Afterthought. Kids, kids are a lot of fun. Haley, Haley's been a trip. I think we just do this to put on as much pressure as possible. The fact that they're Sweeper Exiles feels pretty bad, though. Am I playing around Jawari Disruption? They already played one of them. I feel like the answer is no. I guess if they pass with, like, Heartless Act up here, too, that's not great. Hmm, Valky's really annoying. wouldn't mind a third copy of Vito. Vito is pretty good with Null Priest and it like combos with the, uh, the what's it called better. Nightmare Shepherd's been a little clunky and awkward. I don't know if I love this card. I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like Vito, um, like Vito is probably a better instance of this. Hey, Isabus. Good to see you this afternoon. Nah, I think, I think we're pretty done, Titan O'Clock. Yeah, Vito, Vito seems like the better card when we don't have everything else going on. The fact, the fact that Vito's cheaper on curve, it like makes this more aggressive is really sweet too. Yeah, and like it's a, it's a mana activation too, just like makes your Motley crew attack for double essentially. Yeah, this card is menace. They might just be activating this to block the Whisper Squad, and that's fine, right? They still take six and go to seven. If that's their, if that's their play, I get to just drop the other Nightmare Shepherd. <laughs> Honestly, do I just pass here now? 
or do I do I play the other Nightmare Shepherd? So there's sweeper exiles things that cost three or less. And like, so if they like end step heartless act me, they would have heartless acted already, right? I'm just, I'm just gonna play this. They could have like a counter unless I pay one. This is really bad against the second copy of Disruption. They have a removal spell and just took four in the air. We have Breeze Borrower, sure, deal. Yeah, Rankle. Rankle could actually be great. It lets us find our cards more consistently. I like that. I like that idea a lot. It's a good Black Devotion card, too. I'm like, that killed their Valky. So, like, all right, here's my four fours. Yep. All right, sweet. I know, I know. And so this is this is what being objective means. Objective is being able to look at this game where Nightmare Shepherd was okay and being like, I think we're still trimming that. Maybe maybe we don't trim all of them. Like, I don't know that I want four wrinkles. Maybe we split them two two with wrinkle. I think I think I want to cut the murderous riders and just like not have interaction game one. Maybe maybe we put these in the board. I don't, I don't know that I need Treacherous Blessing. How is Mono White in this format? Uh, so there is a White Splash Red aggro deck that's super good. Uh, Crokies has been playing a ton of it. I'd recommend checking out his content for a reasonable, reasonable build on that one. What are our black one and two mana creatures? <laughs> that, that's not playable, right? I guess I guess I could just play like a couple of Archfiend vessels. If I want to go up Aluris, I could I could just play these, right? Like these work with Luris and Awakening? That's probably the answer, huh? What if I just like cut all the all the nightmare shepherds? Yeah, they work with Vito too. Oh, they work with uh, Null Priest as well, technically. Oh, they do technically work with this, don't they? Ha! Huh. No wait, if it entered from your graveyard or your cast from oh yeah, it does. It does work with this, huh? How does Boast work? Boast is a trigger if you attacked with it. You can pay this pay this cost if it attacked and then get its effect. I'm kind of really into this card looking at our necklace more. Do I just not want Rankle then? I kind of want to try Rankle in terms of being more aggro. This card, this card getting Breezen Borrowed and stuff just feels so bad. I think even if I add this, I still have this, this, and this. I think I, I think I can play these in Cut Nightmare Shepherd. Yeah, Rankle, Rankle just like feels great to turn you, the turn you battle with it. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's see how this goes. I guess I like I like how Whisper Squad fills out our curve nicely. Yeah, if we if we draw lands, the sand is fine, right?
He's ready to pinch, chat. We pinch. Nah, Grey Merchant is everything this deck wants to be doing. Don't touch, don't get your filthy paws off my Grey Merchants. I want, I want all, all of my big, my big fireballs. I think Cat Oven remains to me one of the strangest bannings on Arena to date, especially because they like, they decided to ban it in standard, but then not ban it in historic. Is the, is the weirdest part about it to me? Okay, so I think I'd actually rather resolve Vito here than this. Although I, I guess, oh, they don't, they don't have, they need another Snowland to kill Vito with Frostbite. So this, this dies to Stomp and it dies to Frostbite currently. Hey, MTGO. Thank you. Thank you for the two years. I really appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Huh? Is it is it just wrinkle? I think it's just wrinkle, right? We just want to like start working through some counter spells. I don't want them to have the opportunity to start drawing cards if they have cards that draw. Now the opponent's archetype doesn't usually play disruption. Jawari disruption. I think I just pass here. I don't think I want to throw away a Whisper Squad to deal three. And then we're kind of just hoping to draw a land here, right? Because like now we're throwing away a one one to deal seven. They have Brazen Borrower here. Brazen, Brazen Borrower is bad for us. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That probably means we're dead. I don't think we've raced the Goldspan Dragon at this point. Here, right? They're gonna they're gonna counterspell this and then play a Brazen Borrower because each of these treasures are worth two mana. I think this is a matchup where I just want a bunch of Heartless X. What if what if we become a bad control deck in this matchup? Is that a crazy a crazy line to take? Can we, can we grind? Maybe I'd rather have Vito than Chosen from Death. Twitch chat lives for bad control decks, that's true. Yeah, I think I'm gonna bring in the Duress and my seven removal spells. I'm gonna try and be a little bit more interactive here. If we can keep, if we can keep their threats off the table, like our castles will go a long way towards letting us grind out in the late game, I think. It's only crazy if it doesn't work, big mood. All right, Jim Frostbite. 
Try to start getting some squads. Squad goals, chat. Squad goals. We get to activate the squad, and then on turn three, we get to activate the squad again and play Scorpion. Although we might want to sneak in a veto on three if they tap out. And try and foretell something here. Drawing squad feels real bad. Although I guess with squad drawn, we can go Scorpion squad activate squad here. These are my mediocre beats. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. gonna jam into here because I'd, I'd much rather they play a counter spell than play a glimpse here or behold I, I assume they have some number of sweepers in their deck but we just can't play around those so we're here to space we're here to jam if we get in one more hit here the serrated scorpion trigger should be pretty lethal You're at two, would you like to take seven? Survey, survey says. I'm actually gonna draw a card here. This must be a counter spell then. They have their Storm's Wrath here. They do have their Storm's Wrath. They're missing their second red. We pinch. We pinch. We pinch. He's very, he's very pinchy, chat. Give him, give him the pinch. One, two, three. It's just curve of mentry. What could it be? Still a scorpion without death touch. God, this card would be super good if it had death touch. It's like fine as is, but it would be it'd be next level if it had, had death touch. All right, definitely not playing around distance scanner. They could they could have another another storms rat this game. I 
All right, we played Go Fish and won. Feels good, man. We just pass here, huh? I think they want to play out a dragon. We're into Heartless Act. Need like a negate for this, plus a, an essence scatter or a disdainful stroke for this. I feel like there's a good chance their strokes came out in this matchup. Scatter, scatter's definitely still on their deck though. <laughs> I think they have to counter this Whisper Squad, right? Excuse me? See As you as you will, opponent, as you will. I would I would love to whisper sweet nothings into your ear. Can you hear them chat? The scritch the scritch scrat of the Whisper Squad. Coming, coming for you, chat. The Whisper Squad is coming for you. Kick it! Show me your secrets! Yeah, yeah, this is this is kick breeze from the dead. Very, very reasonable. Did you get that shit beating the meta decks? Does, is our mono black devotion deck not embarrassing? Is there is there a chance our deck isn't completely embarrassing? I feel I feel like there's I've got I've got this inkling. Hey, C O K Y, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel this afternoon. It's just not embarrassing right now. Okay, that's fair. That's that's a good take. It is embarrassing, just not at the current, this current window. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, no man. I've been, I've been enjoying building off meta decks in this format a lot. This, this standard format feels like the best standard format since War of the Spark was introduced. Damn it, magic. Getting, getting to play 26 lands in my aggro deck is kind of sweet, too. Getting to play four castle and four awakening is sick. It's the next big standard tournament. There's basically tournaments every weekend, puppy. Star City, Star City has stuff every weekend. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of uses for our mana, is accurate. <sighs> Light my squad, dude. Yeah, to be fair, two modes, we're not thought seizing people, though. Land. Okay, so how do we feel about Null Priest, hope to draw a land and then lure us into this next turn? I think is the play. I think that's the line. Land, please. Definitely have to just do this. 
It's sad that this is gonna die to a red removal spell here, but... Or are they mono red aggro? They still have frostbite, sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this card, I mean, remember, we mulliganed to five this game too, right? We mulliganed to five, we missed a land drop. RNA standard. Thought thought RNA standard was fine. Definitely dead to that last card being cleave. We're so close to having them dead here. We're what? We're five points off. I guess it's not that close. I can only I can only gain two here. Yeah, if I if I would have been plus two cards this game, I think we win, and it's not close. Mulligan, Mulligan really hurt there. I don't I don't have any live draws. There aren't draws in my deck that I don't have I don't have any removal or anything like that. Probably just trimming this. Beto, Beto's a little slow. It's like one of these, one of these. No, I only I only had three mana in play. Nightmare is live. Um, I think Nightmare is too slow. I think on the play especially, I want to try and be more aggressive. He says keeping a hand with no play still turn three. I'm probably going to reconfigure my deck on the draw to have more interaction in it. Like, I think there's probably a reasonable argument to having a bunch of Murderous Riders and Elspeth stuff on the draw. I think it's probably a good plan. Right, right on time, Whisper Squad. Welcome to the party. Better late than never, I suppose. Anything that cost one or two is a good draw here. Got him. So we'll Ayara here, and then we have Luris into Whisper Squad next turn. Into Grey Merchant the following turn. So we'll see how much more removal they have here. Deal. That's great for us. Ooh. Um. Ha. Huh? It's, it's gotta be Luris, right? And then at this point, we plan to Gary in two turns. So next turn, we go activate, we go veto activate. I'm expecting Luris to get stomped here. Yeah, I think we just squat up next turn, and then we get to kill them with Gary the turn after. So I'm assuming Laris is dying. Yeah. Oh, I'm so dumb. I didn't sack it to draw a card because I'm dumb. I 
I'm so focused on what my next turn looks like. Yeah. So we denied ourselves a free card. Yeah, the giant would be gone too. I don't think the giant is going to be relevant here. Yeah, Vito, Vito is much better than uh, Shepard that we originally had in here. All right, so do I want to just be a control deck on the draw? That, is that a thing that we're doing in these matchups? Feels like feels like a thing we could be doing in these matchups. So I could, I could bring in these and these if I really wanted to be controlling. And then, like, Luris plus Null Priest is, like, a late-game grind engine. Is that is that what I want to be doing in life? Nicholason, thanks for the 15 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Hmm. Yeah, they're not they're not really a burn deck. They're more of a they're more of like a red mid-range deck. How many how many things do we see that this kills? This kills uh this kills the boast idiot, it kills the rider, it kills their one drop. I don't know that this is good. Naked Annex seems pretty unlikely. I'm gonna do this. I think seven, seven pieces of removal is probably plenty. Yeah, I don't know about Deadweight. I don't know, I don't know that I like Deadweight better than any of the other cards we're already playing. You like to bite my scorpion? Deal. Open to dodge rogue here on two. Fervor champion, yep. Are they missing a land? Deal. Deal, we take those. Definitely, probably gonna hold on to the second one to be a spell, but definitely playing the first one out tapped here. And then it feels like they have another frostbite here, so when they attack, we're not blocking. We'll go Luris into Scorpion. I play second Ayara or do I just go Luris Scorpion? I think I just go Luris Scorpion. Now we go Ayara Scorpion. You can only see the current deck list by typing exclamation point deck in chat. Should be on the cardboard live page there. It's also on the overlay. Kidding me? That's bullshit. 
shit. Okay, that could kill us. It's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, castle, castle gives us the ability to grind here, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, this doesn't even stop Emergent Ultimatum, because Emergent Ultimatum is one of the many stupid cards that's templated so it casts things from exile. It always it always makes me chuckle when they do things like that, right? It's really unfortunate. I think I'd rather draw a card than use the Scorpion this turn. The last card of Dragon. Maybe a Cleave, too. There's a way to kill my Luris. Rough. And we'll draw land now, because they drew a spell off our deck. <laughs> Magic's so fucking stupid sometimes. <laughs> God damn it. Should have should have played around it. This castle this castle might drag us kicking and screaming across the finish line. Maybe. Well, to be fair, if we kill the robber here... Come on! No, no cards in hand. Draw cleave. My high from playing Magic the Gathering is gone, I think. I think we're done. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the bathroom and shake that off. That was a really, that, that loss was bullshit. That was just like the worst, the worst, just the harshest loss possible. Like they drew our disc, they drew our removal spell and then they drew Ember Cleave, like. Yeah, like, and like, to top, to top off, like, the bad beats, them drawing spells from our deck, and them, th and them, uh, us drawing lands, them drawing spells off our deck, and then them top decking Cleave, they also had the sideboard card that turned off a bunch of the cards that we drew. So, like, a bunch of the few spells that we did have didn't work because my opponent had their sideboard card. It's fine. In the words of the greatest poet of our generation, we're just gonna shake, shake, shake it off and move along to the next one. It's fine. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay, chat. I am wearing my flannel PJ pants and they are lovely. Chad, I'm 30. I just wanna be comfortable, okay?
Great. I mean, if we can spike a fourth land next turn, we get to go this drain two, this drain two. Being up, being a pretty okay spot. <laughs> I know that that was technically only a two for one, but it felt a lot worse than a two for one. Te technically was only a two for one. Where are all my lands from the last game, chat? All of my lands from the last game are are not here. Definitely think this is a 26 land deck though. Our deck our deck's pretty mana hungry and pretty good at spending its resources. I didn't I didn't mana weave properly. That's a good catch. I'm just going Luris Whisper Squad here. It could, it could be right actually to play both of these. Maybe I'm supposed to play these and then play Veto next turn and crack them for eight. That's probably better because they have Yorian here and Luris can't really attack into Yorian. Yeah, I think I was supposed to play these for no value. Let's play them as beaters. We're trimming Wrinkle and actually maybe we're leaving Wrinkle in and this is a Luris out matchup because they're exiling a lot of our stuff. I could see that. Yeah, let's do let's do that actually. It's been good so far today, Bop. We played four color control before this. That was very good. I just got savaged out of the last match with this one, but this deck's ex definitely exceeded expectations so far. I Ayara Vito Vito Gray Merchant is a is a pretty big slap. I think with this draw, I actually play the Null Priest here. So, so if we draw a third land, this attacks for four next turn. This is worse against uh, a piece of spot removal, though. So if they go like land eliminator, land heartless act, we feel kind of bad. I guess if they represent removal spell here, we just like play whisper squads. They didn't draw the land anyways, chat. Look at that. So I assume Null Priest is dying here and they're taking one. Yeah, double double squad would have been better against the piece of spot removal by a lot. I don't think we're gonna be in a position to beat Extinction Event this game, unfortunately. So they're likely just gonna play like they don't have it. Just commit stuff to the board and attack and see if we lose the game of Go Fish.
Okay. Well, I mean, that's pretty mediocre against us. Does your 80 card deck have your four mana sweeper on curve for the second game in a row? Dear, dear opponent. Survey says. Okay, that's good for the home team. They could have the, they could have the exile everything that costs three or less sweeper next turn now with cultivate. That costs double black though. I think I'm giving up two points of damage to draw a card. Well, Rankle's an okay draw should my opponent um, sweep the board, at least. It's a decent way to push damage. Uh, Shadow's Verdict is a uh, black, black, three, exile all creatures and planeswalkers that cost three or less and sweeps them from graveyards, too. It's an uh, exclamation point, then the card name to get card text in chat. Have a good one, Rage. Thanks for dropping in today. This is them digging for Extinction Event, almost assuredly. Anything top tier is very bad for us. Although again, if we draw a fourth land in our 26 land deck, Rankle is very good next turn. Thanks. Palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's mono black creatures in my exile already. I think we win if we spike the fourth land there, and it's worth taking the risk. Gray Merchant. Gray Merchant might punk them out here still, but definitely missing on a turn like that puts us pretty far behind. Give up a point of damage to try that. They at least can't draw Yorian and play Yorian this turn. We've got that going for us. Yeah, we do get Sultimatum this turn. That's true. Looks like they're looking through all their stuff trying to figure out uh, what they're getting. And they just put us in a bad spot. They get like Sweeper plus two other cards that we can't beat. Uh, I've put together a number of elf decks, and they all just look real mopey and bad, Chef Seth. Everything I've drafted up has not looked reasonable. They just time out casting that? They just timed out casting that. You know what? Sure. Arena's always an out champ. Ah! 
elves can be pretty explosive and historic right now. I don't think that, that I don't think that can possibly be true while they only have one one mana accelerate. Or I guess if they're explosive, they're definitely not consistently explosive. Did they just not take my rank all? They just know we're never gonna draw fourth land. It's the big brain play. <laughs> God, God bless America, my country. Tis of the sweet land of liberty of the icing. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Con conveniently, a land is still lethal next turn because this has menace. So if they draw Yorian, play Yorian, and blink this, land lets Rankle kill them still. Eighteen cards in, chat. Fourth land. It only took them timing out while casting a Virgin Ultimatum, but we did it. I'm gonna run it back. Run it back now, y'all. Sir Medu, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. I think we bought him, Gary, here. Gary! So I think the plan here is squad, activate squad, duress, activate squad. Tron player, thanks for the 29 months. Welcome back. Good afternoon. Oh no, they're gonna murder our squad chat. It's just rude. But what about the bigger, scarier creatures I play? Don't kill my 1-1. One -one. Yeah, you don't, you don't wanna kill, you don't wanna kill my 1-1. One -one. Poor little innocent 1-1, one -one. what did it ever do to you? Squad up. Okay, and then they're gonna have three lands in hand and we're gonna take their one non-creature spell with this. And these Whisper Squads are gonna get them. Or you're gonna have like two lands cultivate removal spell. We'll take the removal spell. Should have, should have bottomed the land on turn one yet. Instead, I bought him to Grey Merchant, and here we are. Should have, should have let the greed consume me. This is the last deck of the day. The last magic deck, yeah. We're gonna play like one more match after this, I think, and then we're gonna play some Myth Garden to close things up. Just cumulative variance with the last game. Yeah, exactly. 
Did Mythgard get an update? Yeah, they've had uh, two expansions since the last time I played. I just I actually got 2020 felt like a decade. I looked back and it had been um, what am I, what's, what's the word? It had been uh, a little over a year since I played last time. Yeah, there are, there are two expansions in at this point. Yeah, I like their IP, and like I said, their client is the most technically advanced digital client that exists in any card game anywhere digitally. They have they have a tournament mode, they have like cube draft in their client, just like tons of features that like I've wanted from other digital card games for a long time. Pretty sure we're throwing one of these away for three points of damage. Their game, their gameplay is pretty good too. I feel like Mythgard gameplay translates to Magic players better than a lot of other games too, because they use the World of Work, the Warcraft TCG style, where like you turn a card into a resource as opposed to getting a linear resource progression. How affordable is uh, is Mythgard? Um, I don't know offhand. I think I'm pretty sure it's comparable to Hearthstone or Arena. They do, they do use the loot box monetization system. They have crafting and dusting. So there is a Hearthstone style dust system. One of, one of the things that's interesting from both an economy and a game design standpoint is their deck building. Your rarities restrict how many copies of a card you can play in the deck. So they have four different rarities and you can only play one of the most rare, two of the second, three of the third, four of the fourth. So a lot of their decks, similar to how uh, Rune Terra is made up largely of the bottom two rarities, from a consistency standpoint, a lot of your decks are the bottom two rarities. So there's the only ones you can play three and four copies of. Isaroth, thanks for the 17 months. Yeah, they do. That's another great feature they have. They have they have feature decks in their game, which what those do is um, they let you... Are you dead? Um, they let you sample community-built decks without owning any of the cards in them. Is Runeterra the most affordable mainstream digital TG? 100%. We played, uh, we played a, uh, an indie project called Chroma that literally gives you all the cards for free last week. So that's obviously better than Runeterra. But as far as like bigger card games though, from major companies, Runeterra is definitely the most affordable in terms of how the econ works. Our opponent's DC'd again here. Maybe they're playing on mobile. Or they just got Comcast in. Can you imagine trying to resolve an ultimatum on mobile? God, that's gotta be awful. Okay, if we win this one, we will play one more to try and hit diamond with black devotion. If we lose this one, we'll be done and move on to myth guard. But if we, if we win, we'll try and double it up to hit the, hit the next rank. What's Chroma like? If you check out uh, my YouTube channel, Gaffer, um, there is a YouTube video of me playing it. I start with the tutorial. It's gameplay. It's gameplay is a neat mix of things. It's got some unique ideas and some borrowed ideas. Uh, the, the beta on mobile is open dirty digits. You just can install it on any Android device. Like I have, I have Arena on mobile on my phone. It's actually, so, car. It's on the table, so to speak. Uh, I have played uh, half a dozen matches, not games, so best of three matches on Arena's mobile client, and um, it's better than I was expecting. I'm hesitant to say it's a good experience, 
but it has exceeded my expectations thus far. There are a few different small interface changes that make it reasonable. It has a mobile client on Android in testing. So there is an early access version of Arena on mobile in the Android App Store. It is not on iOS yet. I think their target for iOS is the next set release in April. I also I also have a high-end cell phone device. So I have a, I have a OnePlus 8, which is a current generation smartphone. How is tapping lands? I have never manually tapped my mana. I have only ever depended on the auto tapper. Man, I really want them to kill this vessel because then we get to go Luris make a 5-5. Five five. You know, honestly, I think I'm just drawing a card with my cast block Thwain here. I should I should figure out I should figure out how to capture my cell phone screen. And give that give that a try on stream at some point. I think that could be funny. Yeah, there's a Vito. There's an Arcrow War. Okay, so this actually doesn't die to that. And I can activate her to sacrifice something. Which is nice. So like next turn, I can go first sacrifice vessel, Luris, bring back vessel, get a five five. Assuming they tap out here. Uh, high end Android tablets literally do not exist. They they straight up just do do not exist. So the problem here with first of the Lockthwain is that the problem with first of the Lockthwain here is that the trigger means they get a chance to stomp my Luris before I can recast the vessel. So I think the line here is Grey Merchant and then Lockthwain sacrifice the vessel. And then this will attack in and they'll block it, obviously. I believe I have just the eight. I don't remember, though, if I'm being honest. They could be dead to the second Great Merchant Trigger, yes. So if I set, I talked about that turtle. If I sack it, they have Stomp Mana available. And the way Ayara's trigger works with Luris is Luris will come into play and trigger Ayara, and then they can stomp my Luris before I can recast the thing from my graveyard. So because because of Ayara and them having Stomp available, I don't wanna I don't wanna take that line.
See chat. All right, so they probably have another stomp to kill my Lockthwain here, I imagine. And if they if they do that, that's like not the end of the world because then I get to go Lurus make a 5-5 five five next turn. I'll no, I'll no longer have a lethal Grey Merchant, but we can, uh, we can make a big scary flyer and then have a lethal Grey Merchant the follow-up turn if they deal with the flyer. That's, that's correct, I did. That sequencing would have been better. I mean, all the points of life matter with my castle. It's, tri it's strictly correct to take the other line that Lampton pointed out is accurate. Attack is free, right? What's up? Love, you love to see it, Chia. Yeah, yeah, a lot of my things not dying to this third chapter is real good. They have the claim. Oh, one chief's thirst, sure. Okay, so if this is a blank, they're dead. They're dead to, they're dead to Gary Gary Numero Numero Dose. Gary 2, the electric boogaloo. This felt super reasonable. We got we've got double double a Cronin ward this game. Um, are you just clicking submit here? I don't, I don't really know that I want to become interactive post board in this matchup. I think I'm just clicking submit. Gosh, we played two different magic brews today, and neither of them were dumpster fires. It's exciting. Exciting. Love, you love to see it, chat. You love, you love to see it. It's everybody bring out this afternoon, by the way. If you're a new viewer, thanks for dropping in. Playing a bunch of magic on stream these days. Standard format's been gas since call time. Call time's been good. We played four color control as the first deck today. It took them it took them a little bit of a rocky road to get here, but it feels like we've arrived at a place that's pretty okay. The tournament the tournament results from the first weekend were super optimistic. I'm interested to see what happens at events this weekend. My thoughts are on the white aggro next floor. I actually think they look really sweet. I think I think I'm gonna make a point to play white red aggro tomorrow or Thursday, because I can see myself submitting that for the F2K event. I like I like that they're aggressive decks 
that generate card advantage and also uh, have a lot of interaction. Like getting to play Giant Slayer, Bone Crusher, and the Spirit is like a lot of interaction for an aggressively slanted deck. Do you, I do think they should uh, uh, they should probably be playing more Ember Cleaves than they are. Like two to three cleaves, like probably three cleaves. Maybe maybe not. I guess Maul Maul does a pretty good cleave impersonation. No, the F two the F two K event is an invite only thing. So we're definitely keeping. I think we're bottoming Luris here. We're bottoming Luris. I want Geary here at the top end. This straw makes me a little bit sad that I just bought him to Luris. <laughs> really glad we played Awakening on one. This is my only, my only uh, graphical emote. Gotta, gotta get in while the get is good. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. The Adventures deck is more of a mid-range deck. Big, big concur. Or, um, I don't know about mid-range, so like, there's, uh, Magic has decks that I would refer to as, uh, monster-style decks. And I feel, I feel like the Adventures deck are definitely monster-style decks. would be my my classification of those no not not Timmy so much as like oh I forgot to I should have attacked with both of these I clicked through it I'm just trying to throw so we don't have to play another match obviously um just like decks that play units with lots of attack basically the fact that they have bulky makes me want some removal spells. I would like to. Yeah, things like Pelucrados and Stormbreath. Things that, like, have big hasty monsters in them. Like, not not combo decks, but just, like, like Pelucrados, Stormbreath Dragon, Questing Beast, uh, Gold Span, things like that. Above above rate creatures, yeah, kind kind of not necessarily above rate like the the dragon. Like I don't think the I in my mind a monsters deck are the ones that are headlined by the four four flying haste dragons because like Magic's had a ton of four four flying haste dragons that are good, right? Like Goldspan is like the third just in recent memory. Um, Gold, Goldspan, Glory Banger, uh, Storm Breath Dragon, like those those types of creatures, I would describe as like the headlining features of a monster stack. I think we just sit here and keep activating Whisper Squad. And those are those are some of my favorite favorite cards to play with frequently. Thunderbot, Thunder My Hellkite doesn't quite fit that mold, but it's close. Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Daddy, Thunder Daddy was a 5-5. Five, five. Nope, still nothing. Still, still just hanging out. Jay Schaefer, thank you for the follow. Scragon, oh yeah, I forgot about Scragon Hulkite. Yeah, Scragon Hulkite wasn't terrible either. It was another one. Yeah, like that. I like that, like, 4-4 four, four, four flying haste red dragon for 5 that, like, has X modal effects on it, basically. My opponent's hand seems to be similarly bad to ours, at least, so we've got that going for us. And, like, if we get to just keep building our board up here, we're going to eventually just, like, cast a bunch of Grey Merchants and kill them. Alex, good afternoon. Thanks for the follow. If you're new to the channel and you want to check out more sweet decks like this after I'm done today, I've got a YouTube channel where we upload two, two to three magic videos per day. 
A lot of green stuff up there. I think I'm definitely just going to keep activating Whisper Squad here. These are my mediocre creatures. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. I would like to ideally play this on a turn where I have four mana, so that way I can play it and exile cards out of their graveyard. Have the Arc Fiends actually been good? Ah, uh, they've been fine. I want I wanted another cheap black creature to play, and like it synergizes with Vito and Luris, so like you know, <laughs> that's that's heckin' rude. Chat, they're taking my deck and beating me over the head with it. I think we double block, right? Because if I double, or we triple block, block with everything. Because this way, if they want to kill one of my things, they lose drawing a card. Like, my things are definitely worth less than them drawing a card. So, I think we just save ourselves a point of damage by blocking here. Well, they'll sack this to draw a card, and if they don't, that's fine. One more, one more squad the deck. Here's a, here's an interesting game theory question. If Whisper Squad was Pack Rat, how many Whisper Squads would we play? Not Pack Rat, uh, the, the rat where you could play any number of them. I can, I can play any number of Whisper Squad. What's the optimal number? Is it like eight to 10? I feel like, I feel like it's probably like the eight to 10 range. 20, 20 sounds like a lot. Yeah, I feel I feel like 10, 8, 8 to 10. You relentless rats is the name, yeah. This deck's been a really sweet drunk all. 69. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it's somewhere, it's it's definitely north of four. I would I would definitely I would definitely play more than four. Yeah, that, that's probably the right answer from Avocado there. Like, you probably just play, like, however many one-drops you want to play in your deck. I could, could see that being the right approach. Man, that is still not a land, huh? They're unfortunately going to get a chance to kill my Chosen from death here before he can exile cards from their bin, but I think I just need to be resource efficient here. Especially, like, with the castle in play, too. So, like, if I if I draw a land next turn that's untapped, I'm going to want to just, like, activate my castle and try and get to my fifth land ASAP. What are what are the odds? Uh, it's, it, we're fifty percent chance to draw land. Either we do or we don't. I, I think we're actually yeah we're actually above fifty percent chance to draw land in actuality at this point. There's twenty three lands in forty five cards. So in the in the no joke category, we're actually we're actually right right about a coin flip. Well, I mean, as far as spells go, like, Vito's pretty good. Like, Vito... Vito means these gray merchants just get, like, extra lethal, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't think my opponent ever boards out any of their takeover cards. These are my cards. There are many like them, but these ones are mine. Ugh. 
wonder if they'll start pressuring us here because we have because uh, we we're getting likely to draw the gray merchant. Also, like my obvious plan here is to draw with the castle. That's what I communicated by not playing the scorpion, so they know I'm gonna want to be using my life total. So pressuring that has a lot of incentive from here on out. I think I just block here and take three. I could see them sack this Mire Trait into a nice life gain. Now they want to take our card off the board. That makes sense. They're going to get to exile it here soon. If we draw Lyris, we get to make a 5-5 next turn. Which would be sick. So this blocks Woe Strider profitably, which is nice. Not as big of a swing as we'd like, but it is what it is. They have Heartless Act. That's super unfortunate. We're slightly ahead on mana, they're slightly ahead on board. I guess we're at parity on mana, huh? We're ahead on cards in hand. So they drew claim the firstborn or stomp. Another one of those is pretty good. Feels like they drew stomp. Oh, they could have been, they have this active, these activations up. I was trying to read priority, but I can't read priority here with these cards. So they can escape Woe Strider here. Do they draw Valky? Valky's really scary. Looks like they're escaping the Strider here, which does drain us for one. Flip it, magic players. Are they dead to this? Make no mistake. I'm not pretty, pretty close to dead to this, right? Uh, they block two, they take five. Oh yeah, this is lethal, right? Yeah, that's why they were taking, right? Because they were dead to this with this line. Man, how many turns did we stick on lands this game? Holy crap. All right, we are playing Mythgard hereafter. We're gonna play one more match. I don't wanna, I don't wanna lead up, I don't wanna stay on the bubble here. So if we lose this match, we're gonna move on to Mythgard because I, I can't be live all day. And I wanna do at least two hours of Mythgard, but we're gonna, we're gonna play one more to see if Black Devotion can pull us up into Diamond. Before we, before we shift games. This deck looks so bad until it wins. Be Green Merchant is so good, chat. Our deck is a pile of crap cards and Grey Merchant's just like, nah, brah, I got you. I'm gonna drag you kicking and screaming across the finish line. This giant bag on his head, chat. That giant bag is the rest of our deck. It's awful, but he's dragging it along. Look at that. Okay, I would like to draw lands for the next four turns, please. Thank you, thank you for the one drop on one deck. I want all lands from here on out, okay? Hit me. No more spells. Hey, I mean, that technically qualifies, right? Oh, 
Rawr! Aggro uncommon! Rawr! The other cards being bad is important. It's so your your opponent can think twice about killing them so you keep your devotion count high. <laughs> <laughs> They're strategically bad. They're strategically bad. Our deck, so that's actually, someone said we're gonna draw all tap lands. Our deck actually doesn't have tap lands in it. Which is, which is another, another thing that's sweet about it. Uh, uh, except for awkward, uh, eggdoms plus castle hands, all of our lands are untapped. You have, uh, 20, 20, or 16 swamps, or 18 swamps, yeah, 18 swamps, four of these four castles. Don't sweep me. Don't sweep me. Don't sweep me. She's been eliminated. Land? So, good chance they're taking an extra turn next turn off of this card. That's usually the foretell card these Yorian decks are playing. So we could we could basically be getting Saltimatum next turn. Alright, it's just a behold sick. Not not an extra turn card. Our deck at least did us the solid of, even though we bricked on land, we drew some cheaper plays, so it wasn't like we just completely died. This counter unless we pay one. It's not, could be a heartless act though. I think with the gray merchant in hand, I need to not throw away things for damage here. Heartless act, yeah. The kitty cart, it is the kitty cart. Yeah, really, really need to rankle the turn, the turn they were tapped out. Oh, were they tapped out? They had eliminate, right? They had, uh, they had behold. I could have drawn this off of behold though, I suppose. Hey, Sal, thank you for the 33 months. Good afternoon and welcome back. The TMN attack was free, right? Uh, they just crew, they just crew this. So it was, it was, it was, they couldn't kill it, but like it also wasn't gonna do anything. It's cruise, cruise for four. This comes with its, this comes with its crew. Land. That's the best land too. Don't disruption me. <sighs> Fuck this card. We're dead at this point, right? Feel like I don't see us catching up from here. We could we could run some more lands off and um We could run some more lands off, I suppose, and include an Eggdom's awakening and bring a bunch of stuff back. The last one wasn't an extra turn card, which increases the chance that this is an extra turn card, though. Yeah, may maybe Eggdoms can. Uh, that's probably an optimistic, optimistic desire. I suppose, like, they attack with the cat cart, we block with a vessel, and, like, we could rip a, um, rip a, what's it called? Like, a Lurus, maybe? Dead. Definitely the four dress matchup. I think I think I've just been cutting Laris here because it uh, a lot of their removal is exile. All right, and this is the easy game where we're on the play, and then we have to try and win a hard game on the drop.
I mean, this hand is literally a one, two, three, four, five curve, right? Definitely leading on Awakening as a land tier because uh, in case they have something weird like Duress in post board. And again, just like, definitely, I, I can honestly see playing a 27th or 28th land in this deck. We've lost way more games to Stumbling and Dying than we have to Flooding and Dying. Okay, maybe you just play like two, two creature lands. And if I definitely don't want tap lands because curving out is pretty important. Hey, Worky, thanks for the sub gift. You've been very generous today. Good to, good to see you around again. The, the Null Priest Veto Curve is really sweet. His veto, veto lets this attack for four, basically, which is nice. I assume they're going to have a removal spell on two here. Oh, just Valky, sure. We can play Faceless Haven. I don't know that I want to play Faceless Haven. I guess is that the best choice? Maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine. Well, as far as lands go, that one's pretty good. How many snow lands do you need to reliably turn on faceless? Ah, uh, like 20 or so? We're, cl we're close to that, right? We have eight, 18 snow lands right now. We basically we would basically have 20. Is it better than crawling barons? I have I have eight I have eight lands technically that don't activate it. Is the is the question? Uh, there aren't any black snow payoffs worth playing. Especially, especially not an aggro deck. There's like some mopey, mopey black snow cards. Lua legit, thanks for the follow. It's got to be correct to duress here, right? Sinistic Gamer, good afternoon. 100 shillings and I have shillionaire. That's exciting. Yeah, faceless. The resource efficiency on faceless is good, but like, you know, think about a game like this, right? Like, what does Faceless Haven look like in a game like this? It's probably still fine. It actually costs six, Drunk Owl. You, in your, in your head, you made that card better than it actually is. <laughs> All right, they topped a card here. They're not just drawing the Yorian. God bless America. Well, I guess we're attacking. And then we're drawing a card with this. I mean, okay. cards in our deck that cost more than four mana chat. The only ones! The only ones! <laughs> They're probably dead. They're probably dead regardless, right? It just like does it. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. Alright, didn't, didn't need him. Didn't need the Grey Merchant, okay? We should cut it. Card sucks. Not even playable. I ain't even playing this stupid card. Get it out of here. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody need, nobody need Grey Merchant.
yeah, I mean, you know. Squat up. Work up towards the merchant here. Love it. <laughs> I think with that draw, I lead on the swamp. There's a there's a chance that this is a spell. Th this game, non non zero chance this ends up being a spell. Ramp spell on two is really scary when they're on the play. They drawing Yori in here? Is that their play? Deal. <clears throat> oh yeah. You bind you bind that squad opponent. You do it. Get her. Get him done. Love it. Okay, yep, yeah, it's it's looking like Igdoms here might be uh might be a spell for us this game. Which is sweet. It's a play chosen from death and activate squad again next turn. Activate squad here too, obviously. I think about just drawing Yorian again. They are, okay. Yeah, that's great for us. They don't have, uh, they don't have removal mana up here. We drew five lands, is that legal? Yep. Asking the real questions. Pretty sure the police have been deployed. No! Oh, I should have, I should have activated during the upkeep chat. I've made a huge mistake. I've made, I've made a huge mistake. Cause there is there was nothing I could draw here that meant I wasn't doing this, this plus this. That was that was that was just just wrong. Hey, don't shadow me. Would I have played Wrinkle? I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, time to find out if this is a land or a spell. And it is. It's a good pickup too. All right, they can ultimate us next turn. We just need to keep them off of taking an extra turn. I guess if they ultimate them, they can put a sweeper and an extra turn spell in there and it feels real bad. Set the Shadows Verdict, yep. It exiles all the crap out of our graveyard here too, which is super unfortunate. Hey Flash, thanks for the 26 months. I appreciate that, welcome back. Good afternoon.
And now they ultimate him and kill us. Yeah, fuck. We were so close. We are so close, chat. This card, this card's just such a beating. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have assumed. That's right. Oh. So I hate to end on a low note, but I have a, I have a contract to do Mythgard today. I want to need to be done streaming by four o'clock, so I want to make sure we have time to get to that. I feel like after watching all those games play out, my one big takeaway is that I want I want some more mana in the deck. Um, I think I think the answer is probably cut probably cut some mix of Luris and these vessels and like play play to Snowlands and then yeah I don't know Luris Luris was kind of kind of whatever. We have enough enough graveyards up here. If we go up on lands, I feel like I could reasonably go up on my wrinkle count. So I think I think I'd kind of like. I think this card was like fine as a as a one drop and a life linker with Vito. Like this basically is a one drop that attacks for two with Vito, which felt good. Our two drops are more squads. I can see that too. This is nice just because it has it has devotion to black, but you're right, in, in general, this card was kind of unimpressive. I could just completely, you know what I'm gonna do? If we play this again, I'm just gonna coward split it. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut one of each and I'm gonna add I'm gonna add another wrinkle. I think the only reason I didn't have more wrinkles is because we kept stumbling, but I think with uh basically 20, 28 lands, obviously, these need to become snow covered lands for faceless haven. But yeah, I think I think this is this is where I would finish on the on the black devotion deck. So I would I would go up a wrinkle, I would go up two more, two more sources here. It felt like it felt like the games where we were getting to play magic and actually hit our land drops where we were we were pretty well off, and we were definitely losing way more games to stumbling and dying than to flooding and dying. And this card in general was just super impressive all set, and like being able to have this be a spell more often. Have this be a spell more often than a land, I think is really good, especially when they're like kill, like killing our stuff randomly, being able to pull them back out with this felt really, really good. So all right, we're going to shift gears into some myth guard for the rest of the afternoon. This is a sponsored segment for them. Get that one, get that one loaded up. Where's my steam? If they would let me play six copies of Awakening, I would, 